Okay, so we're going to finish up Woman's World magazine right now. Okay, it says, uh, the older I get, the more I realize that housework is really just for homework for adults. And it's two kids watching this woman vacuum. That's kind of cute. Okay, next page. Seven days of inspiration. We're going to read the spirit lifters. Sometimes I read them, sometimes I don't. But this page actually spoke to me, so we're going to actually share it with you. Uh, seven days of inspiration. Take one day a week and feel great all week. Day one, hope is on your team. Day two, you get thing, great things done. Day three, someone appreciates you more than you know. Day four, joy can never stay away for long. Day five, your dreams can come true. Day six, there are so many paths forward. Day seven, happy, it's what you're meant to be. Now, this is the guardian angel page where readers share their stories of divine intervention. Love from mom. When woman world reader Stephanie Zintergraf was grieving the loss of her mother, she received the comforting sign she needed. She writes, there's never a good time to lose your mother, but my mother got sick when I needed her the most. I had just gone through a painful divorce and moved back to my hometown with my two-year-old daughter. My feelings of abandonment and failure were so painful that I clung to my mother. At the same time, I was also relishing her company because of my ex-husband did not like my family and did his best to keep us apart. We did all the things we used to enjoy. We shopped, went out to lunch, went antiquing, we talked for hours. I began to notice that my mom, who was usually full of energy, was tired and a bit short of breath. I initially attributed this to her getting older. The fevers and the night sweats were harder to, to dismiss. Within a couple of months, she was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, and six months later, she was gone. I had lost my best friend, and I missed her terribly. Between the work and caring for my little girl, I had very little time to even process my loss. Most of the time, I was too devastated to even cry. I prayed for a sign that Mom was still with me. None came. Then a few months later, I was alone in my apartment when I felt this sensation, almost like a breeze. I looked at the windows. They were tightly shut. Not a second later, my mother's music box, which I had inherited, started playing by itself. I was momentarily shocked, but then I remembered something from when I was a child. I had been sitting with my mother and my aunt while they chatted over coffee. My aunt's mother had recently died, and when my aunt was throwing out her mother's broken music box, it started playing again. I remembered this and knew that my mom had found a way to tell me that she was still with me. There have been many other signs over the years, but that was the one that changed my life. A few months later, ironically right before Mother's Day, I met my current husband. We were married a year later. I knew Mom was there that day celebrating with us. The angel expert Kyle Gray says, An Angels and loved ones send signs in many ways. Items have a sentimental value that hold powerful energy that can support the connection. It's no wonder that Stephanie's mom came through the music box that day. When we are connected by heaven, we feel an air of calm and a feeling of warmth. This energy is the presence of love entering the room and is clear message that our loved ones are safe in the next realm. An instant awe. Take a moment to leave your worries behind and lose yourself in the loveliness. They show this beautiful fields of lilacs with the sunset and the sun sky. The sun rays are just brilliantly displayed in the sky. It says May more than any other month of the year wants us to feel more, most alive. From Fennel Hudson. And I also want to read the circle of kindness to you to hopefully let you know that readers are sharing little reminders of how much goodness there is in the world. There are still honest people in this world. A few days ago, I decided to spend my day off shopping. I went to the nearby department store, made my purchases, and drove home, only to discover my wallet was not in my purse. I went back to the store and asked the lady who had checked me out if I left my wallet on the counter. She went back to look and 
In the meantime, another employee who had overheard us told me a lady had brought a wallet in that had found in the parking lot. The employee had asked her to leave it, but the lady didn't feel comfortable doing that, so she left her number and left and left with the wallet. The employee reached out to her, and she came back with the wallet. There were honest people in this world, Heidi Asher from Pasadena, Texas. I was touched by their tremendous kindness. Recently, two of my youngest grandsons wanted to go up to the playground nearby, so I took a book and settled at a picnic table while they played. I glanced up to see three older boys playing basketball when my two young grandsons stood watching. My older grandson had brought his basketball, hoping to shoot baskets. Soon I saw that my grandsons were playing with the older boys who apparently had invited them to join the game. What a nice thing for them to do. Sharon Jennings from Winfield, Iowa. She took time to help us. I was feeling very overwhelmed and defeated after unsuccessfully trying to make an appointment for my COVID-19 vaccine. I was, de de I was desperate. However, my daughter's Carlene's friend, Christine, reached out and said she would help us. After several days searching online as where the shots were available, she was miraculously able to get my husband and me an appointment at the local pharmacy. We were grateful for her kindness and time she spent helping us. We will never forget her patience and persistence. Pamela Tabone, Mount Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Okay, now to the fun part. A moment for you. Your wishes and well-being matter. It may be second nature for you to put others first, which mean that, which can mean leaving your own needs and wants for last. But your happiness counts. The time has come to make time for you. You'll have so much more to give when you do, and you, your dreams will start to come true, too. Now for the five-minute romance, which is perfect title, Rain Drops and Butterflies. And I don't think I've said this yet. All this information is from Woman's World 510-2021. This is our third part and hopefully the final part of this book. The rest of it you're going to have to pick up and read. Okay. Raindrops and Butterflies, the five-minute romance when her childhood crush and neighbor, Todd, comes over to help Abby plant flowers for Mother's Day. Love is in full bloom. Sitting on my heels, I surveyed the holes I dug in three by six foot flower bed a bright yellow butterfly flitted around the pots it was mother's day number five since we lost mom every year dad and i planted flowers in the bed he built for her a tradition dating back to my childhood wherein we paid tribute to her love and her favorite flowers this year though was different as dad's surgery man i got to play in the dirt on my own as he supervised from his wide porch what do you think? I glanced toward him, pointing to, at, at my trowel and the three holes to the left, the purple snapdragons. I think you're going to get drenched, Abby, if we don't hurry up. My gaze drifted to the sky where the clouds were gl glowered ominously. Darn, I grabbed a snapdragon pot. Rain or not, these flowers would be planted today, Mother's Day. As I scooped fresh soil around the third snapdragon plant, a light drizzle coated the petals and flattened my hair against the forehead. Three plants down, twelve to go. Abby, I heard a deep masculine voice call from across the road. Without looking up, I knew who that voice belonged to, and the desire to curl up my inside churned in my stomach. Todd, the Pearson's prodigal son, my teenage painful crush, with dirty knees, rain dripping down my face, and my hair stuck to my cheeks. The local beauty queen I wasn't, but I sucked in a breath and plastered a smile on. Angling my head away from him as he crossed the road, I called out, Hey, Todd. He carried a beach umbrella under one arm and in seconds had it open with a long wooden pole staked in the ground behind me. Mom always used this when she worked in her garden. Thank you. I met his warm, deep green gaze and my stomach flipped on itself. Todd smiled. My throat tightened as my cheeks heated. Maybe it just was not a teenage crush. I don't want to intrude. You're not intruding, Todd. Dad leaned forward in his chair. I'm out of commission, so it's slow going this year. Todd smiled. I know this is your Mother's Day tribute to Mrs. Lawrence, so if you'd like help, I'd be honored. Dad glanced at me and smirked. We love the help, Todd, he purred, sitting back with a satisfied smile. In the next hour, Drizzle turned to downpour, but we stayed dry under the umbrella. As Dad orchestrated plant placement, our shoulders brushed, and with each touch, 
under a confined space of the umbrella, my stomach fluttered. This close, I could smell the spice of Todd's cologne, feel the heat of his body, and each time he landed a, me, handed me a plant, I swore his fingers lingered a little bit longer against mine. As I pat, patted the soil against the last pink snapdragon, the rain dwindled to a drizzle. I see in the blue in the sky, with his dirty hands resting on his knees, Todd set back, his grin increasing the dimples in his cheeks. That's because we're done, I laughed. You two finish up, Dad called, standing from his chair. I'll have cherry pie and coffee waiting in the kitchen. I don't think either of us is fit for pie right now. Todd looked down at himself, then at me, You're, though you always look great. Heat warmed my cheeks. Oh, right. His gaze locked on mine. You do, Abby, always. I opened my mouth, but no words came. Listen, I'm going to run to my parents' house and get cleaned up. Then I'm going to come back for coffee and cherry pie. He touched my hand. And Abby? Yes. After that, I'm going to ask you to dinner on Friday. Dinner, I stammered, like a date? He grinned after taking my hand like a dake. I should have asked you a long time ago, but I'm not going to miss my chance again. Then he was gone, darting across the road to disappear into his parents' garage. Oh, my. A date with Todd on Friday. The yellow butterfly flitted by, circled over the flower bed, and spun its graceful arc before settling on a snapdragon. Your mom always loved that yellow one's the best. Dad stood on the porch, his expression wistful as he turned to go inside. She'd be happy about your date on Friday. It would have been the perfect gift for her. I smiled as the butterfly alighted once more, landing gently on my hand as it opened and closed its wings. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Pamela Moran. Okay, here comes the fun part that you all look forward to, and some of you even said to me on by email, where is that horoscope? Well, here it is. Your horoscope for the week of Sunday, May 9th to Saturday, May 15th by Marissa Brown. Taurus, that's April 20th through May 20th. Around the 11th, you're going to get a green light to set a powerful intention. Be specific and trust your gut. Then work with the teammates on a project close to your heart on the 13th. Collaboration feels fulfilling now in your lucky days are May 10th, May 11th, May 12th, and your lucky numbers May are 2, 6, and 12. If you're a Gemini, that's May 21st through June 20th. Rest, recharge, and dream around the 10th. Tuning in to your intuition and writing what you observe can help you plan future goals. Come the 12th, don't be afraid to step into the spotlight on your job. You're going to shine. Your lucky days, May 9th, May 12th, May 13th. Your lucky numbers, 2, 3, and 10. If you're a Cancer, which is June 21st through July 22nd, you're going to feel the urge to broaden your horizons from the 11th on. Honing your skills and planning for future travel, scratch that itch. On the 14th, connecting with loved ones and sharing how you feel can make it for a heartwarming experience. Your lucky days, May 10th, May 14th, and May 15th. Your lucky numbers, 2, 9, and 18. If you're a sexy Leo like me, because I'm bored August 3rd, it is the Leo days are July 23rd through August 22nd. You may want more recognition for your hard work on the 9th. Set an intention that's bold and pragmatic now. From the 13th on, have a deep conversation with a loved one. Connecting on this level boosts your bond. Your lucky days, May 9th, 13th, and 15th. Your lucky numbers, 1, 8, and 10. If you're a Virgo, which is August 23rd through September 22nd, Around the 11th, renew a commitment to caring for your wellness on a daily basis. Envisioning a game plan sets you up for success. Then you're going to have a chance to work with a friend from the 12th on. Dive in for extra fun. Your lucky days, May 10th, 11th, and 12th. Your lucky numbers, 6, 7, and 9. If you're a Libra, that's September 23rd through October 22nd, you're going to want to go beneath the surface and t the talks with a loved one on a 10th. Speaking your truth can bolster understanding on the 15th. Your schedule may be packed. Take time for self-care to stay firing on all cylinders. Your lucky days, May 12th, 13th, and 14th. Your lucky numbers, 6, 8, and 17. If you're a Scorpio, October 23rd through November 21st. Prioritize time with a dear friend around the 12th. You'll feel seen and heard. And on the 14th, you can enjoy eye-opening, light-hearted experiences with loved ones. Learning something new together brings you even closer together. 
your lucky days. May 10th, 11th, and 12th for your lucky numbers, 7, 8, 7, 9, and 18. If you're a Sagittarius, that's November 22nd through December 21st. You will be able to get clear on a health goal around the 9th. Small steps will lead you to the finish line. Then you'll want to focus on your home life on the 13th. Spending time gardening or sharing stories feels restorative. Your lucky days, May 9th, 12th, and 13th. Your lucky numbers, 4, 6, and 15. And Donna needs a sip of water. Okay. If you're a Capricorn, that's December 22nd through January 19th. On the 10th, a burst of creativity makes it easy to express your feelings artistically. The experience could provide sati prove satisfying. And on the 12th, have that conversation about money. What you can learn can help you feel more centered. Your lucky days, May 10th, 11th, and 12th. Your lucky numbers, 2, 5, and 6. Now, if you're an Aquarius, January 20th through February 18th, you're going to put your nose to the grindstone on the 12th. Make a room to be imaginative can improve the end result. And from the 13th on, new doors could open to support your cash flow. Trust your gut to lead you forward. Your lucky days, May 12th, 13th, and 14th. Your lucky numbers, 2, 6, and 11. If you're a Pisces, February 19th through March 20th, connect with others around the 9th. It can be a fruitful time to try new activities and brainstorm. Then it's time to make your goals a reality from around the 10th on. Take it one step at a time and you'll be unstoppable. Your lucky days, May 13th, 14th, and 15th. Your lucky numbers, 3, 11, and 12. Okay, I'm just so parched. If you're in Aries, that's March 21st through April 19th, on the 11th, you're going to set a money-related intention. From there, a ground approach serves you best. Come the 13th, paying attention to your dreams can help you answer questions about any ongoing emotional issue. Go for it. Your lucky days, May 9th, 12th, and 13th. Your lucky numbers, 2, 10, and 12. Now we're do doing some personality insight. What does your garden say about you? From regal roses to whimsical wildflowers, every bloom has its own special way of making us smile. And the garden type you love best reveals unique insights into your most enchanting traits. If you prefer wildflowers, you are an independent-minded mind adventurer. Gardens corral nature, and that makes your love of wildfires, wildfires, wildflowers the least tameable of all blooms. A clue to your confidence as you're self-assured enough to let your garden grow free. When others see the variety of flowers, they subconsciously assume that you're wise. After all, what would be smarter than allowing nature to take the lead? Water Elements You are an empathetic and mysterious sage. Nothing whispers serenity quite like a soft sound of water. Whether you installed a small waterfall in your garden or prefer to escape to a local park where ponds and greenery seamlessly interact, you exude a deep spirituality. Like the oasis you're drawn to, you're both strong and gentle and capable of great change. Roses, you are a fearless leader. Like the most beautiful things, roses can be sensitive and a bit complicated. Your eagerness to roll up your sleeves to prune these finicky royals of the garden testifies your ambition and unflappable pursuit of perfection. You know that nothing worthwhile is achieved without a bit of pain, including roses, thorns, and all. Herbs, you are a nurturing seer. Cultivating a garden that takes care shows you have patience and visionary nature. That's because of a bountiful, nutri nutritious herbs or veggies needs times to come to fruition and demands more than a little TLC. Calm and focused, you don't see the big picture. You actively tend to it, ensuring the seeds of today turn into tomorrow's harvest. Containers, you are a sharp thinker. Tending to a small space requires careful planning and a keen imagination. Whether you're weeding or plants that detract your aesthetic or nurturing those that will give the most blooming bang for your buck, your disconcerting eye and detail-oriented nature lets you punctuate your space with less is more elegance. We only have two more pages, y'all. Can you imagine that? You deserve good things. Blessings are just waiting for your yes. Hope and hard work, imagination and determination, they're all set the stage for success. 
But what really makes happiness happen is one little thing with big impact, realizing that you are 100% destined to live it. Wonderful things unfold once you do so believe. Hero in uniform, proof that it only takes one person to make a difference. His act of kindness will stay with us forever. We see a picture with a little girl and um, it looks like a, a parent and a policeman. So let me read the thing here. It says, he went above and beyond duty, says Inman left with daughter Nina and police officer Sobinski. When Paramus, New Jersey police officer Robert Sobinski had to break a little girl's baby doll stroller after the child got trapped in the frame, he replaced the stroller with a brand new one. Awesome. Mommy, can you help me, please? Amen Giobrera's four-year-old daughter, Nina, called from her bedroom, her small voice filled with urgency. The Paramus, New Jersey mother and daughter had just finished a Zoom preschool session, and while Inman was winding down the cup of coffee in her kitchen, Nina had gone to her room to play. Pushing open the door, Inman discovered Nina had somehow gotten wedged in the frame of her baby doll stroller. How did you manage that? Inman asked. I don't know, Nina said with a shrug. Inman tri tried lifting the stroller over the Nina's head. When that didn't work, she tried lowering it past her hips, but the risers were too narrow. We need help, Inman decided, not knowing who else to call. She dialed 911. Paramus police officer Robert Sobinski was only blocks away when he received the curious dispatch. A child is trapped in a toy. Officer Sobinski is a member of the department emergency service unit, so his vehicle is stocked with rescue equipment. Grabbing the bolt cutters, he headed inside. But when Nina glimpsed the cutters, her face flashed. Terror. No, she wailed. It's okay, I won't use them, Officer Sobinski assured Nina and tried the same maneuvers as Inman with the same results. The officer caught Inman's eyes. I'm going to have to break it, he said, and grabbing hold of the plastic clip that joined the handle to the stroller, he pushed and twisted until it snapped. That should do it, he announced and slid the handle away, freeing Nina. I'm sorry you had to come out for this, Inman, thanked the officer Sobinski. Don't give it a second thought, he told her. I'm a parent, too, and when you have a child in trouble, you have to do something. Closing the door, Inman breathed a sigh of relief, but Nina was no longer all smiles. I want to play with my stroller, she whimpered. We'll get you a new one, Inman said, but when Nina asked when, Inman sighed, I don't know soon. Outside, Officer Sabinski was about to file a report when he thought about his little boy, Robbie. Robbie loved his Hess truck. If someone came into their house and broke one, he could only imagine how upset his son would be, and he knew what he had to do. Driving to a nearby Target, Officer Savinsky bought the exact same stroller and returned to the Inman's house. Oh my, she gasped when they answered the door. Yay, Nina whooped. You really didn't have to do this, Inman said, but the policeman disagreed. I couldn't have Nina remember the first time she met a police officer was the day he broke her toy, he said. Inman says with a kindness will stay with her and her family forever. It showed Nina that if she ever needs help, she can depend on the police. In fact, now she calls the police her friends. By Bill Houston. Love and laughter. You all know how much I love these children to these the little cartoons and even the quote. So let's get going. Sliding into summer. This Malaki three-year-old submitted by grandmother Susie Mast of Oregon is playing in what looks like one of our McDonald's used to have a playland and they would have these tubes where the kids would go up and play in and slide down and that's what he looks like he's playing and looks like he's having a ball of fun working on my green thumb he's got a little dinosaur shirt on and a little um, cap like a little old man would wear and he's working on these cute little flowers and it says, Logan, one-year-old, submitted by Grandmother Brenda from Johnston, Ontario. And he's just having uh, this little grin on his face is just so dashing. He's going to be a heartbreaker. Okay, we got two women going into the ye old wine shop. Roses? Oh, I thought you said let's stop for and smell the rosé. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. We pitched in and brought you your very own TV remote. And it shows... The two kids handing the mom the TV remote. Having tremendous fun hanging from a tree. 
Claire, four years old, submitted, submitted by grandmother Terry Sell from Ohio. And the little girl just is, uh, she looks like a little monkey. She looks like she's having a ball. The quote of the week is this. Life throws challenges and every challenge comes with rainbows and lights to conquer it. Amit Ray. We have a beautiful Australian Shepherd that says Sitting Pretty, submitted by Samantha Sewerman from Missouri. And a precious 11th month old little girl who is sitting by a Happy Mother's Day sign. And it says Future Artist, Skyla, 11 months, submitted by Grandmother Veronica Draw from Kentucky. Wonderful book, wonderful moments, and there's so much more I didn't share. That's why you have to pick up May 10th, 2021, but we finally finished the whole book. I'm so proud of us. So, yay. Donna's going to go work out. Then afterwards, she will come back to you and read some more of the Diana Palmer Rancher's Wedding. And then, I might even sing a song, because you know me, I like my even number videos. So this isn't goodbye, it's just, I'll see you in a few.